Hey guys, it's Devana, and we are back with part five of the eight part iceberg. And I will be honest, I'm ready to get through with this iceberg. So, uh, let's get to it. The Burger Chef Murders. These took place at a Burger Chef restaurant in Speedway, Indiana, United States, on the night of Friday, November 17th, 1978. Four young employees went missing in what was initially thought to be a petty theft of cash from the restaurant's safe. By Saturday morning, it became a clear case of robbery kidnapping, and by Sunday, when their bodies were discovered, a case of murder. While investigators believe they have identified some or all of the perpetrators, without physical evidence, they have not been able to prosecute those who remain alive. Between 11 p.m. closing time at midnight on November 17th of 1978, four employees of the Burger Chef restaurant at 5725 Crawfordsville Road disappeared. Assistant manager and a few of the employees. A fellow employee who came by at midnight to visit the board noticed that the restaurant was empty, the safe was open, and the back door was ajar. Police found two empty currency bags and an empty roll of adhesive tape next to the open safe. The Denver Strand was an unidentified serial killer operating in Denver, Colorado from 1894 to 1903. He was responsible for killing three pro in the span of 10 weeks in the year 1894, and although many suspects were arrested, nobody's been convicted. The stranger is also supposedly responsible for the 1898 murder of clairvoyant Julia Vaught in 1903 of Mabel Brown, but this remains only speculation. The Bird Road Racist on July 19, 1977, in Coral Gables, Florida, a 17-year-old girl named Judy was driving home along Bird Road when a car came up behind her and began flashing its lights. The car pulled up next to her and the driver pulled out a gun. He forced Judy out of her car and drove her to a construction site where he raped her. The rape then drove five blocks away and dropped Judy off. He kept her driver's license and panties. Judy had become the first victim of a man called the Bird Road Rapist who kidnapped and 24 women between 1977 and 1979. Judy described her assailant as someone between 6 foot and 6 foot 2, weighing about 220 pounds. He spoke English with a slight Spanish accent. She also said he had a mustache and drove a light green car. The Fort Worth Three. The Fort Worth Missing Trio refers to an unsolved missing persons case that began on December 23rd of 1974, when three girls, Mary, Lisa and Julia Mosley went missing while Christmas shopping at the Seminary South Shopping Center in Fort Worth, Texas, United States. The car the girls were driving, a 1972 Oldsmobile 98, was left in the Sears parking lot at the mall. The girls have not been seen since. On the morning of December 23, 1974, a little before noon, Ra Rachel Trisha, Renee Wilson, and Julie Ann Mosley set out to go Christmas shopping. Mosley asked to tag along at the last minute because she didn't want to spend the day alone. The girls first headed to Surplus Store in Fort Worth to pick up some layaway items that Renee had waiting. From there, they headed to the Seminary South Shopping Center. Several witnesses had reported seeing the girls in the mall that day. When the girls did not return home, the families became concerned and traveled to Seminary South to search for them. They arrived around 6 p.m. that evening to find their car parked in the Sears upper level parking lot. It appeared that the girls had made it back to the car that afternoon as the gifts they had purchased were found inside of the car. The family stayed at the mall all night waiting for the girls to return, but of course they never did. The Toronto Hospital baby deaths occurred in the cardiac ward of the Hospital for Sick Children between July of 1980 and March of 1981. The death started after a card cardiology ward had been divided into two new adjacent wards. The deaths ended after the police had been called in and the digitalist type medication that had been possibly been used for the alleged killings had begun to be kept under lock and key. Three nurses were at the center of the investigation and an apparent attempt to poison nurses' food. One of the nurses, Susan Nels, was charged with four murders, but the prosecution was dismissed a year later on the grounds that she could not have been responsible for a death excluded in the indictment, which the judge deemed a murder. A conspiracy between multiple nurses was regarded by the judge as not credible. The lead detective resigned, detective resigned, an official government inquiry discounted claims by the hospital's own former chief of pediatrics that the deaths were not homicides and were not proven to be from Digoxin, which is the medication that they were uh, supposedly using for the killings. 
A second suspect was not prosecuted. It has later been argued that the chemical compound, which can leach out of rubber tubing that was used in medical apparatus for feeding and delivery of medication, can be mistakenly identified by medical test as that same substance, the digo, digogen. I'm sorry, I can't say it. But anyway, it had been used in the cause of some of the deaths. The deaths are still imagined to be homicides by some, but uh, other people disagree. Tell me what you think about this one in the comments, especially if you know the case. The Lisbon Ripper was an unidentified serial killer who between 1992 and 1993 murdered three prostitutes in Lisbon, Portugal. The first victim was 22-year-old Marie Valentina, nicknamed Tina, who frequented the area around Novas. Avenidas? No, I can't say these names. I'm sorry. That's a long one, too. But anyway, she was found on July 31st, 1992, in a large cabin in Povoia de Santo Andinao, lying in a pool of her own blood. She had been stalled, dismembered, and some of her internal organs had been completely removed. The second victim, 24-year-old Maria Fernanda, was found on January 27th of 1993 in a large cabin in Intercampos by railway construction workers who were working at a nearby railway bridge. She was also dis- and some of her internal, internal organs had also been removed. The third and last victim that we know of was 27-year-old Maria jo- Joao, a resident of the Santo Antonio Gos Calavieras uh, says ghetto who lived alone she was found in march 15th of 1993 near the location of the first victim of whom she was actually friends with like the previous victims she was also dismissed but this time all of her organs were removed all the victims were young brunettes named maria allegedly and drug addicts and were dismissed with a sharp object that was not a lo- knife they believe it was possibly a scalpel the 2013 Burundi nun killings. On September 7, 2014, Sister Bernadetta and Father Mario Pulsini, the owner of the convent, went to the Melanquire, I can't say the name, I'm sorry, but it's an airport, to pick up guests while Olga and Lucia stayed at the convent to prepare and get the place ready for the guest. When Bernadetta and Mario arrived back at the convent with their guests, they found that the door was strangely locked. No one answered the door, despite how much they knocked, so the two instead went to the sisters' quarters, where the nuns live, and saw that not only was their door closed, but the curtains were also pulled so that they couldn't see inside. They tried calling the convent's phone, but nobody picked up. Eventually, with no other choice, Father Maria resorted to breaking down the door. They were greeted by a shocking scene, as they were greeted by Sister Olga laying dead in a pool of her own blood. In the room next to her lay Sister Lucia as well, with both of the women having had their throats slit and heads beaten with a stone. Father Mario quickly called the Brennanian police and then informed his superiors in Italy about the incident. The police and security forces quickly arrived at the scene to investigate, with a large crowd soon forming at the scene, with the residents grieving for their deaths of the two nuns as, as the police patrolled the area. Father Mario urged the remaining nuns, who were the guests picked up at the airport, not to sleep at the convent, but they decided to stay anyway so that they could pray together, and they also felt safe due to a large amount of police patrolling in the area. Later that night or early the next morning, Father Mario received a call from Sister Bernadetta in which she stated that she was hearing noises in the convent and that she thought the killer may have returned or possibly never left. Father Mario rushed back to the convent, but it was too late. When he arrived, he found Sister Bernadetta in her room, decapitated. 1972 Grand Island Murders The Grand Island building permit was on the city council agenda for September 11th of 1972. The Peaks wouldn't see that day. The weekend before this was the Husker Game of the Year. Allen and his wife had flown to the game at UCLA, the first since Nebraska won the 1971 National Championship. The day after the game, Bob Allen's father, Ron, went to the Peaks Lakeside home just off of Gun Barrel Road to watch the Bob Devaney show with them. Instead, he found their bodies in the master bedroom. Bill, Bernice, and Barbara, all three had been shot in the head with a 22 caliber gun. Bernice, despite being shot in the face, was still alive. The Allens flew home and rushed to Bernice's side. How many were there? Allen remembers asking his sister. Unable to talk or write, Bernice held up several fingers. The family hoped for details as her condition improved. Bernice took any answers to her grave, dying two months later after this incident. Two days after her death, Allen sent a letter pleading for help. He criticized Hall County authorities, although the investigators later commended their work. To this day, the killers have never been found. 
the 2007 Arena Massacre. On February 19, 2007, three members of the Arena Party of El Salvador, Eduardo William and Jose Ramon Gonzalez, as were their driver Gerardo Ramirez, were found murdered near Guatemala. Guatemala City, Guatemala. Four police detectives were arrested and charged with the murder, but within three days of their arrest, the four were murdered in a maximum security prison cell. Several prosecutors investigating the deaths have also been murdered. The three men were on their way to Guatemala City to attend the Central American Parliament on February 19th of 2007. Their Toyota Land Cruiser, part of the four-car motorcade heading to the capital, pulled out of the convoy and onto a remote road in El Holocano, about 20 miles southeast of Guatemala City. The next day, the bodies of the three congressmen and their driver were found in their charred and burnt vehicle. There were indications that they had been tortured before their deaths. The Butcher of Mons is a media name given to an unidentified serial killer who committed five murders between January of 1996 and July of 1997 in or near Belgian city of Mons. The name was allegedly chosen because of the high precision of dismemberment that the victims' bodies had endured. Then they were placed in plastic b bags clearly visible on the roadside or on a channel embankment. And on to the final one for part five of this iceberg is the Batman Rapist. Yes, ladies, gentlemen, aliens, and everything in between, the Batman Rapist. This is an unidentified English serial sex offender who committed at least 17 sex on women in the city of Bath, Somerset between 1991 and the year 2000. He is a suspect of Britain's longest-running serial rape investigation, condemned Operation Eagle, and has now eluded capture for more than 30 years. Detective Inspector Paul James said it is one of the most complicated and protracted investigations that the force has ever undertaken. He was nicknamed after leaving a baseball cap bearing a logo from the Batman film series at the scene of one attack. Police believe that there are more victims who have never been who have never come forward. The independent crime fighting charity Crime Stoppers UK have offered over ten thousand pounds reward information leading to his capture. He has also been referred to in the news media as the Riddler. All right, everyone. Well, that is going to do it for today. Uh, if you enjoy listening to this, I guess podcast. If you would like and subscribe, that would really help get my channel out there and on the algorithm, so I can get seen more. I really do love doing these videos, and this is what I would like to do for a living. So, help me make it happen. Um, anyway, I'll see y'all next week. Good night. <laughs>